welcome back. The kit's taking place. The first five of the reciprocating chronometer. We've got those five fixings and fixtures and things. I haven't packaged up the engravings yet. Beautiful laser engravings. We've got the clock movements and plastic gloves and the all the laser cutout bits all coming together. And I've just put together this very exciting collection of parts. It's even got the little twinkly gems in there and all the 3D printed things. I'm packaging these up because it's all plastic so nothing's going to get scratched. Other than I have to say the, um, the seconds hand, but I think that'll be fine. So I'll get all them packaged up. And I'm about to cut out the ply for the bases. You can't beat the bit of laser cutting. What an idiot. I've just packaged up all these into those and I have forgotten the felt things, even though I'm currently about to start cutting out felt things. I tell you what though, buying felt on a roll, a four meter roll, is so much cheaper, incredibly cheaper than buying those poxy little small art craft sheets. I can't remember what the cost was. I think it's something like sort of five pounds for a you try like this or the individual sheets are something like um, a pound each it's absolutely ludicrous anywho let's cut the felt out <laughs> It really does cut felt beautifully. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous, I tells you. Oh, I'll get that sorted out and then cut out the friction pads, which I just mentioned I have forgotten. That's what I'm talking about. And I was about to start packing up all the plastic particles, such as this, using the nice layout boards. And I took the dog for a walk, you know, 10 weeks or 12 weeks in development of this clock, final development, the preparation of all these parts and the designs and problem solving and planning and carrying out producing all the instruction videos and you take the dog for a walk and you walk through the park and one part of this has always bugged me as you know I'll use this older one for demonstration purposes this wretched wretched hate is not a strong enough word as I've said before I was designing this originally and had a gap in the middle and stupidly thought what can I do to overcomplicate it and fill the gap and ended up with the AM PM indicator don't look out the window to see whether it's dark or light look at that nice idea at the time and the problem with it all the mechanics work let me see if I can move over a bit all the mechanics work as this snow follower arm lifts up and nothing's going to move is it is on there we are um, it lifts that it then drops the pull down which pushes this one section and that switches between PM and IM using this funny shape cam and ratchet indeed but because this is falling down off the edge of the snail cam well, I've got a snail cam to show you yeah, here we are there's the snail cam and that rotates round slowly pushing the hour hand around until it reaches the end and then it should be that way shouldn't it really that's right comes round and then it drops back to one triggering this but because of the momentum with all that crashing back down well not crashing but falling down it spins this too far i've tried all sorts of things i've tried little dimples here and oh you name it i've tried it it's been the, this is what's held the project up for five years would you adam and eve it and then I realised I could add a little bit of felt, a felt disc in the back of here and replace the axle with an adjustment screw which worked really well. It meant you could just fiddle around until this was stiff enough not to run up past and not stiff enough to stop this from falling down. Get to my drift. So, I'm just going to show you one of the proper ones. Like so. 
So there's now a justice screw here, a little felt disc, so you can adjust the tightness of it. It's fine, it works, and hence the fact it is now a kit that's available. But, you know, I can't leave things alone, basically. So I was walking the dog, get back to the point, and realised... Oh, I've got a picture of it, actually. I realised that by adding another lever, a little dangly one, there's the pull there. Another one here, attached to the same snow cam filler arm. As the pull falls down and turns the ratchet, this could actually theoretically stop it. Oh, there's the post going to be picked up. Brilliant. That is a mechanically sound way of achieving it. It's not reliant on friction or anything else. It theoretically should work perfectly. So, I'm going to build one. And here are the salient parts. There's a new one with an extra hole here. There's a spindle I've just 3D printed for that. And there's the new bit. So that's going to hang down there. And that's going to hang down there. Uh, it's a real, it's a pain. Why on earth didn't I think of this before having spent weeks and weeks doing all those instruction videos and getting all the boxes ready and all the rest of it anyway? I'll see, I'm going to test it before I package up and get the next 10 off ready. I'm going to test it, see if it works. If it does, I may just add this one extra little bit, thankfully not very much, and include an extra instruction sheet with the kits or something. Anyway, I'm going to try that out and I'll get back to you shortly. Damn it, Janet. All these weeks. Anyway, it works. I tried. Started off by trying it with a little thing like that, like I'd drawn. But for some reason, it always hung slightly over to the left and wouldn't actually engage. But now, I think you can probably see that. Lift it over, drop it. Lift it over, drop it. Every time it can't spin. I've loosened this screw right off so it should be able to spin. I'll see if I can get the camera to show you what's happening. I may have to hand hold it. Give me a moment. Forgive the wobbleness. If I try and stop it wobbling. So there's the new bit hanging down. And if you come over the top, you can see what happens, hopefully. Ooh, I'm losing my fingers. Here we are. So if I lift this up, as it drops down, the new pull, or whatever it's going to be called, swings into place and provides an actual stop for it. Oh, why didn't I come with up with the idea sooner? Good thing is, it means just making a load more of these, 10 more of these with the extra hole here, and 10 of the new things and a couple of extra bits of hardware. So it's not the end of the world, but I have just realized that there's a slot here just in case this screw goes too far for this one, so there should be one for this one, and there isn't. Guess what I've just finished cutting out? Oh, yay! What fun! The fun never ends, how we laughed. I think I'm going to design a slot, and I'm going to somehow jig this up onto the laser cutter, because I'm not going to waste all this acrylic, and then cut out the new one. I, if this is too good a way of doing it to not use, I think. So, anyway, let's get on with it. Oh, I hasten to add that the um, way of doing it with the felt does work, because I wouldn't have got this kit prepared. I'm not trying to sound... I'm sounding very guilty, actually, but I'm not, because having put the screw here, it did work, and I was happy with it. I'm just even happy with this. Anyone in their right mind would have thought, it works, forget about it, think about something else. Like the very exciting impending TARDIS console, Steampunk TARDIS console, which is the next project on the list. But not me, no. I suppose the good thing is that I'm never happy until I am 100% sure that something is perfect. This, I am happy that that is perfect. So I'm going to go with it. Right, there's the thing with the slot in it, and I need another slot just down here. There's my drawing, there's the bit top right hand corner which I'm not going to cut, and there's the little twiddly bit that I want to cut. So, and here it is in real life. I've lined it up where the laser actually fires by clicking the laser button, funnily enough. Focus the laser button, which fires a single pulse, and I now know that that is exactly lined up along this edge, three millimeters from the top, and is perfect. And I've just run that, got it to cut it, and it has cut beautifully. Look at that, absolutely spot on. 
I don't know why I bothered with these measurements. It always does my head in when I have to work this sort of thing out. So I'm going to try it with the real thing. You wouldn't believe it, would you? I'm just snapping off a bit of 3mm acrylic to use as a spacer. It's so sharp. So I've sprung a leak. Oh, I've got to sort that out now. I can't find any plasters. I suppose I should really have a safety first aid kit here. It's on a really awkward bit where I keep bending it and it opens up anyway. Some cello tape or something. Right, ready to try it. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, action stations, uh, start. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's check it out. I'll tell you what, that is not bad. That's, that's absolutely spot on. And now I know how to line this up, I can um, cut myself again. And I'll cut the rest out, actually. Would you believe it? I'm just taking a load of photographs for the addendum, or whatever it's called, probably pronounced it wrong. And I painted this up, and there was a speck of dust on it because I forgot. How annoying. And then while I was thinking about that, thinking I must remember to hoover everything, I sprayed this up, and there's lots of specks of dust on it. My brain it is a muscle. Look at this. Oh, I hope to catch that working. It's meant to drop back right down. You can see I've now replaced the bearing because it was causing some issues in... Um, accuracy and things. I've replaced that with a follower that I'm going to have ordered some PTFE which is that incredibly um, slippery plastic also known as Teflon. So I'm going to be cutting them out of that. Obviously I need to do... Oh, oh well, that's right. Good. It's the first time I've tried this and it's taken me days and as I've said before not only have I redesigned and added the braking system for this but now I've got completely bogged down with redesigning this bit there's the original one which had just the pawl on it to push that round and then it changed to one with two hills with the lovely as I, I don't know why I'm telling you all this I'm it's about three days later for me I'm still getting over this horrible curled um, but I've just talked about all this so you'll know that so I don't know I'll shut up so I've redesigned the snail cam to stop having to take account of having a bearing. It's only 6mm diameter, the bearing, but nonetheless, if you think about the shape, as it rolls over the top, it's never going to drop down instantly. So the hand reaches uh, almost 1 o'clock, 12.59, and then you want it to drop straight back, whereas it wasn't. It was starting again to about there as the bearing rolled over, and then it would go back. Um, and that's not good enough. And thank you to the person who bought um, the ready-made one. I wasn't intending to sell a ready-made one, but thank you very much, because they've been most helpful. I've been working with them, picking their brains for ideas and things, and how to improve it, so... That's been very helpful. Let's talk about cam followers. Obviously the one with a bearing on it slows down. It starts dropping. It can't drop it instantly. So there's an issue. And I started off by thinking, right, sort this out. You could have some sort of little extra extension that it rolls onto, reaches a certain point, and then something releases that. So it suddenly drops down. <laughs> It is just so complicated. Or alternatively, you go for an infinitely small, possibly stainless steel pin. But again, that's going to cause a lot of friction, but is what you're after, really. And then another one where the idea was to have part of the cam that, again, hinged back, in effect, to let it suddenly drop down. Nah. So in the end went with one that was rectangular or some sort of shape like that and then that solves the problem because it comes around you've got quite a large bearing surface especially as it's PTFE so it's very very slippery low friction that comes to the end drops down and then carries on its journey so I'm very pleased with this I've redrawn the snail cam so it should be really really accurate you can see how much work's gone with this. This is freestanding clockwork number 27. Let's zoom in and have a look at part of it. This is where, well, there we are, there's the original design for the snail cam with the 6mm bearing on it. Obviously that wasn't right, so 
let's go to the new one here's the new one and this is how you can design a snow cam very accurately drew a bezier curve crossing over each of these that was divided divided the total difference these two different radiuses and divided it by 10 or something and then put 10 spokes around and hence the fact that's how I drew it and there's the experiment I did this morning just to design this it's so complicated trying to get all the angles right but I think I have managed it which I'm very pleased about um, so I'm very pleased with that this is all sort of a bit higgledy piggledy but anyway so that comes up and then that should yeah I think it was just a bit stiff because I didn't used that one before so that's great and now that should it goes back to one and then if I demonstrate there we are and I've carefully designed the angle of this bottom of the follower to take account of the uh, the varying changes in angle it is so complicated you think oh yes yeah, snow cam nice and simple but it isn't not in my head at least so that goes all the way to the top and then it sticks why is it sticking is it this loose oh it was that because i'm still using the screw version of that okay let's try that one more time as Brittany said right that's all moved now round that's better it's going to be worried because i spent ages calculating whether this was going to get in the way but that's perfect i'm really pleased with that and the fact that this is going to be made of ptfe should ensure that it has a very very long life and you can unscrew it and replace it if necessary but i think that's a much better way of doing it i'm very happy with that so i'll now stop talking and i will edit this video together who would adam and eva you know five years in the making Getting it all developed over about two months, getting the first five sold, and then suddenly coming up with these improvements straight away. Why couldn't it have happened at any point in the last five years? Why did I have to wait till now? Never mind, mustn't grumble. Having changed this much though means I'm going to have to do quite a lot of re editing of the instructions. And yeah. Not sure whether an addendum will suffice. I'll have to see. Anyway, I'll leave that running and check whether it works. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you found this frustrating and annoying like I did. I um, hope to see you next time. If you liked it, want more frustrating and, frustrating and annoyance, then please click subscribe and the bell. Thanks again. Hope to see you next time when I might have actually started working on something else, like the TARDIS console.